The current Garda understanding of heat is an extremely broad one. In Garda documentation, it is defined as any non-crime incident which is perceived by any person to, in whole or in part, be motivated by hostility or prejudice. There is, at this point, no legislation in place to make this Garda definition a charge upon which someone can be arrested, but this could change quite soon. Over the last couple of weeks, there has been more and more debate happening due to the considerable public unease which is growing due to what has been described as the threat to freedom of expression in the Prohibition of Incitement to Hatred and Violence and Hate Offences Bill. It is because of this bill that Independent Senator Ronan Mullen has criticised the Minister for Justice for, as Senator Mullen has put it, smuggling a radical new definition of gender into an already controversial hate speech law. It is a bill, many argue, that will, if it passes and becomes law without serious amendments being added to it, will prohibit communication or behaviour that is, as the bill itself puts it, likely to incite hatred, while at the same time failing to clearly define the term hatred. So, yeah, very much open to interpretation. This is what Senator Mullen had to say about this bill recently in a video he posted on the pavement outside the Marion Hotel in Dublin. Well, Bruce Springsteen has left the Marion Hotel. Some of us are still continuing to work here in Dublin and a very serious issue has arisen. I'm worried about the government's strange new hate speech, hate crime legislation and particularly the radical new definition of gender that they're trying to smuggle in. This could mean that people who are concerned to insist that men are men and women are women or that biological males shouldn't be playing women's sports and endangering girls or that young girls and boys at school shouldn't be taught strange new ideologies. If they express themselves on this issue, could they be criminalised? Could there be a knock on the door saying this is hate speech? We can't have this chilling effect on free speech in a democracy. So I need you to contact your TDs and senators, to contact the government. Fellow senators are concerned as I am and we will be fighting for a radical redrafting of this bill. But we need you to get active to help us. Please see my Twitter handle for more details. Thank you. Herman Kelly is a former Director of Communications in the EU Parliament and President of the Irish Freedom Party. And he took time to speak to me recently about the Criminal Justice, Incitement to Violence or Hatred and Hate Offences Bill 2022. I started by asking him to share his views on this bill. It is probably the most Orwellian and draconian attack on our civil liberties and our ability to, to speak freely and express ourselves freely since the foundation of the state. I call it the anti-free speech bill, but it's a proper name I, is it the Criminal Justice Incitement to Violence or Hatred and Hate Offences Bill 2022. I can see even now, just as a layman with passing knowledge of law, but I see when it talks about the meaning of protected characteristics, would you believe it for characteristic D, which is religion, in the act in relation to the protected characteristics, well, it says references to, quote, religion include references to the absence of a religious conviction or belief. So that means it means religious and non-religious or believing a religion and not believing a religion. So between religious and non-religious, that means everybody. So that ultimately means that everybody is a protected characteristic. No, but the main thing is, at the present moment, all citizens are equal before the law. This dangerous bill gives privileges to certain identity groups chosen by the government, which other people do not have. So that introduces a huge inequality before the law, which I believe is completely unconstitutional. There are other dangerous aspects in the bill. One is the part which introduces for having material. It doesn't define hate or hatred in any proper fashion at all. So the, the whole bill is very aqueous. It's ill-defined, it, which means it's open to be used by judges and by the Gardaí for a, a wide range of behaviours and situations, which perhaps the bill wasn't even intended to cover. But anyway, uh, other very dangerous parts is this whole thing of having material in your possession, which you're just reading or looking at, you haven't communicated either publicly or privately, it's just having 
matter in your possession which they class as hate material. Uh, like, let's say even if you're working in a museum and you have Nazi memorabilia in your possession, is that under the bill? Is that a hate crime? Uh, uh, but anyway, it introduces the idea of like, as Paul Murphy pointed out there, it's like thought crime, just to have in your possession material which they don't like, which the state does not like. And it brings us on to uh, the third issue, is that hate speech seems to be speech that the government does not like, that the government hates. And the fourth aspect, which I believe is very dangerous, is that it completely overturns the almost millennium long tradition in the Irish and coming from Magna Carta and British legal tradition of presumption of innocence. It basically overturns that completely in a new legal precedent and, and basically says that people who are charged with this crime of hate crime or hateful thoughts, that they have to prove that they're innocent rather than the presumption that they're innocent until the state prove them guilty. So I believe it's very, very dangerous. But things are moving very quickly. Arthur, uh, tonight I see Senator Michael McDowell, who I interviewed once myself as a journalist when he was Minister for Justice. He has written to the Justice Minister, Simon Harris, and basically asked the very simple question, what is gender? So it, it, it is, it's put forward here that it's one of the protected characteristics, gender and gender identity, but he asked, what is gender? It seems to be an ideological term without any basis in biology and even in law in Ireland, even with the gender recognition bill, it basically talks about men or woman and men becoming woman, but it doesn't define beyond male and female. So he asked, what is gender? To whom does it refer? And what is transsexual? Can a man become a woman and vice versa? So he's asking him very pertinent questions. And I'm very pleased to say that the adults seem to be back in the room again, which is great. Chairman, you mentioned there about Senator Michael McDowell asking a question which very few people seem to ask, a question which sparks often quite a furious debate between those with opposing viewpoints. The whole area of gender identity is a very sensitive topic. The very fact that you were speaking about this could well lead you to being branded as right-wing, bigoted and hateful. What would you say to those who may apply this label to you and for your views? This trans ideology, it is an ideology without any reference to biology. In regards to being called right-wing, well, if saying that a man can become pregnant and that a woman has a penis uh, is classed as right wing, I'm very, I'm very pleased to be called that because this LGBTIQ ideology, I believe, is very dangerous because it, it's not only talking about changing the law, it's also talking about changing practices that grown men with all their sexual equipment still intact we're approaching a time when they demand a right to come into the showers with my children, with my daughters in school, or if they're in prison, that men who have been convicted of rape, they demand that they are under the Gender Recognition Act, can be classed as women, and they demand to be put in the woman's prison where they can carry out rapes again. It's just crazy that there's so many aspects of this bill which are dangerous to the general population. And as I said, it's one of the most dangerous and nefarious legal acts that have ever been attempted to be put up in Ireland. Why do you feel that this bill is being bought in? This act is introduced, and it's in page six of the bill, part two interpretation. The framework decision comes from the European Union, an agreement of the European Council. In 2008, Ireland is compelled to bring it in into law, and that is what is happening. So all this material is being introduced into Irish law, uh, compelled by the European Union. That is why it is being brought in. I suspect the reason it is being brought in is to prevent free discussion of the EU open borders and its impact on immigration numbers coming into Ireland. And also the growing power of the LGBTIQ 
ideology in Ireland that those who rule over us want to stop any dis public discussion of this trans ideology because they know the more this issue is discussed, as has happened in Ireland and has happened in Britain, the more people learn about the implications of this dangerous trans ideology in their society, the more they are opposed. So we can see a stark difference in the last year in Britain and Ireland because before people thought, well, yeah, people can do whatever they want. But when they actually learn the implications of grown men in, in showers, in, in sports teams with their, with their daughter, of men in women's prisons, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's, it's absolutely frightening. It sounds very dangerous. And people want to discuss it freely. And the government, this is the government trying to shut down debate on important issues. Now, Open debate can also like can lead to like a lot of noise, but it can also lead to light. And sometimes only one person can be in the right, and they should be allowed, even though they're in a minority, to voice their opinions. And that's why I'm opposed to this dangerous legislation. Do you reckon it's actually driving this bill? Because I believe that increasingly over time, there's a there's a growing fusion between the political class, the media class, and the NGO class. And there's certain thoughts and ideas which must be believed. Um, like It's almost like a social compulsion that people are in the in-group and the out-group according to their beliefs that, that they hold. And as, like for example, official Ireland wants uncontrolled, unvetted immigration. That's government policy, and most of the left-wing political parties are in favour. Other things, this LGBTIQ ideology is now flavour of the month. We have the army, the Irish, the guards, so many NGOs marching down O'Connell Street on Pride Day with all the LGBTIQ colours. So it's all agencies of the state, all political groups, the press, the NGOs, the multinationals, they demand compliance and they do not want even a few people disagreeing with it. So I believe that the state is introducing this law to shut down debate in important issues as much as they can. So the introduction of laws and practices can carry on relentlessly without any opposition, without any vocal opposition. Cancel culture is something which some say is happening and which some say is a conspiracy theory. What do you say about cancel culture? Cancel culture is happening. Let's look at what happened during the lockdown. So anybody who tried to enunciate views that I'm unhappy with the idea of mandatory vaccination, I'm unhappy with being locked down in my house, that not being allowed to travel for five miles or five kilometers, not being allowed to travel to see my family, not being able to go to work, that I must stay at home. I know I'm opposed to that. I have opinions contrary to that, and I want to get on the public airwaves. That was impossible for anybody to enunciate views contrary to government policy. So cancel culture does happen, and it happens every day, every week, every month, with the help of the mainstream media in Ireland, who sadly are not holding power to account, but basically, in too many cases, are mouthpieces for those in power. And it's very, very dangerous when so many people get together and try to enforce a certain worldview and silence people uh, by either social pressure or also people losing their jobs, etc. Uh, so it definitely ha it definitely uh, is there, and it's very dangerous. We should turn around and say, what are you afraid of? What it, why does open debate and free expression scare you so much? If what you say is true, well, why don't you argue about it freely then? Why do you need draconian threats of fines and jail to impose ideas? If your idea is are so good, well, let's debate them. Ireland has changed a lot over the last 30 years. There's no denying that. Ireland is now a much more diverse place. It is as it is. So the question is, is diversity a bad thing? This whole thing about tolerance and inclusivity 
and diversity. We hear all the time about, oh, diversity, let's celebrate diversity, diversity of race, diversity of nationality, diversity of disability, inability, et cetera, et cetera. They, they talk about diversity of everything except for diversity of thought. So if what they say is so fantastic and so rooted in the truth and in nature and in biology, well, why don't you allow people to have diverse opinions and to have the ability to enunciate those, those opinions freely? To uphold free speech in Ireland, there's a rally on Saturday at Customs House on the 13th of May at 2 o'clock. The main speaker or the headline speaker will be Professor Jared Casey, who lectured in philosophy at UCD for many years. Other speakers, speakers will include Solicitor Maliki Steenson.